Ann Kornick from Paint and Porcelain. I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting and also hopefully um, to um, recruit experienced painters to paint along with us. And today we're going to be working on sunflowers and it's going to be a textured version of sunflowers. Probably a little bit different than what you've uh, done in the past, I hope. Um, this is the first coat. This is what it's going to end up looking like. And as you can see, the leaves and the stems do have a texture to them. The colors that you're going to be using today are a mixing yellow um, or an egg if you have it. Then I have a dark green. So the darkest green that you have would be good. A moss green, kind of a medium green. Orange, whatever orange you can find. Poppy, uh, yellow red might even work as an orange on this. Um, but yellow red tends to, I've noticed at least with when I fire, it tends to fire my yellows out and I don't get as nice yellows. Um, the oranges don't. Yellow brown, um, you will need a couple of browns here. I have auburn, I have the rich brown. And the other thing I added, and you may or may not have this, but if you ever had portrait paints, reflected light makes an excellent shadow um, on some things, especially with yellow backgrounds. And so I've added reflected light, but you don't need this. You can certainly use auburn, or you can even use your rich brown, uh, or even uh, your southwest or whatever brown you uh, orange you have and mix it. So, you know, you can do that. Um, now, I am going to be using palette knives. Mm, surprise. I was doing this when I still was doing my palette knife pumpkins. And I apologize. We're not going to use palette knives all the time. So I'm going to be using this palette knife, which is rounded at the top, as you can see. It works great for the tops of the leaves, and it also works great for the center of the flowers. We have hydrangeas. They're the flowers that, well, here, I was starting to work on a hydrangea plate. And I have it right here. This is what they kind of look like. They're kind of all fluffy. I haven't been real happy with that plate, so I never actually finished it. But they have leaves that look like this. And the reason I like these leaves for using them um, with this project is because the backs of them are heavily textured. And you'll see that this will be exactly what we need to make the leaves on these sunflowers look very realistic. We're going to take the sunflower line drawing, as you know, and we're going to trace it on. Let me put this down. And you're going to be using whatever tracing paper you have, but you put the darkest side down. It should be a wax-free um, paper. I use a transfer paper uh, called Sorrel, S-A-R-A-L. I get it from Dick Blick online, and I always put the, the dark side down and I trace on it. And then... Um, you get this. Now, I have it. Normally, it would be in red. I outlined it with a Sharpie. And that's, this is what the Sharpie looks like, the permanent markers, because I want you to be able to see it while we're working on it. But painting myself, I would not go this extra step. Uh, I think you should be able to see pretty well. I tried really hard to get it in, in frame so that we had it and you could see it. So... Um, the first thing I'm going to do with this is start out with my round palette knife, and I'm going to do the centers. Now, for the centers of these, I want to do a dark brown. Um, I want to do a light brown on the side that's going to have the light and a darker brown on the side that's going to have the darker. So I'm starting out with, you could use a yellow brown, you could use an auburn, you could use a mixture of the two. You just dip your palette knife in the paint, come over to the side and press and smear. It's not difficult. And if you go outside the lines, I've got a remedy for that too. Okay, and on these, I'm going to do a little here and a little here where the light would be with the lighter color. Okay, and I'm going to wipe that off and I'm going to take my darker brown and that's the reason I have it on the turntable. It's easy to flip. And I'm going to flip it around and do the underside of these. Okay. And the back side of this. Maybe a little more there. 
<laughs> the secret is to just flatten it out as much as you can. So those are my centers to my flowers. Now I'm going to do other things to them. I keep these little Q-tips handy right here. And like here, I went out. I just take the Q-tip and wipe it off just so that I don't interfere with the area around there. All right, now I'm going to start on my stems. That's the next thing. I'm gonna use my moss green. I'm just putting it on the very tip. And I'm going to start and I'm going to go down one side of the stem and then the other side of the stem, I can pull it across with the brush. So it's the side that has the, uh, the deepest color that I'm gonna do this with. Got a little too much there, I'm gonna take that off and then I'll go back and spread this. There we go. And then I'm gonna take my darker green and do this guy because I want it dark up here where it's dark underneath the top. And I'm just going to go down. It's real simple. You just touch, touch, touch. Remember, a lot of this you can correct with your brush. And if you want a little more darker on this side here, you can do that too. Now, this came out awfully heavy here, so I'm just going to wipe it off with my brush. It's just way too heavy. It never should have come off that heavy, so I'm just going to take it off with my brush. If you get it too heavy, that's one of the problems, as you know, that we have with China painting is that it'll just, it'll just um, pop off when it gets firing. Then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm, um, let's see, this would be the side with the shading. So I'm going to do it there. Come down here. Come down. Chook -a -chook, and come down here. It's hard, this curves up at the end and it makes it a little harder to do this. But if you like the other, the other, it, this is a, another project that you could try that would be pretty simple. And you can go, like I said, you can go outside the lines. If you go outside the lines, it's no big deal because you've got your, your little um, Q-tip here and you can just go down and straighten that out. Same thing with up here over here, let me switch to this side, okay, so that's what I have so far, let me bring it up to you so you can really see what I've done, now I know there's no highlights on this, and I'm going to take care of that in a minute, but just so you know, I know I'm aware of that, then I'm going to start working on these leaves, there are four leaves here, Again, I'm going to use this because when I get done with them, I think you'll be really pleased with, with the outcome. Okay, I'm going to take my paint. I'm starting with a lighter color green on the outside of this. And I'm just... Okay, that's the outside there. I'm going to do the outside here of this one. Mm-hmm. Over here, I think this is the part that would have the, the light on it. And then there's one right here, and I think I'm just going to put a little bit of the light right there. I'm going to wipe it. This guy's a little thick. If it's too thick, go back and get it off. And then I'm going to take my darker color. Everybody's totally quiet. This is something you you like, you don't like, you don't know what to make of it, you're sick and tired of doing the uh, palette knife. <laughs> that could be too. I promise this is the last one for a while. I just thought this was so cool when I did it. It really turned out well and I was really pleased with it. I'm putting the dark down there. I'm gonna put a little dark right in here. Do you see what I'm doing with those leaves? Okay. And then I'm gonna add some dark up in here. And 
and I'm going to add a little bit of dark down in here. Now, this is the fire that we just do this on. It's going to be the next fire that we start adding washes and things, but I just want you to be aware of that. Now I'm going to take my brush. So this is what I've done so far. And I took some pictures of these so that you could kind of see what they look like. And um, I have them right here. Let me see if I have one that has a nice leaf picture here. Here, this one has good leaf pictures. And the leaves, you can see, they really do have a texture to them. So that's kind of what I'm going for there. And now I'm gonna wipe off what I don't want. There's a little green there, but I can take care of that with my uh, brush. And I'm gonna start using my brush. And I'm just going to gently soften this. Hmm, down here we have a big, there. And I'm gonna soften this up here. I'm just knocking down the big ones, the big areas where I might have Try not to lose the texture. I'm just trying to get rid of any of the large areas where there might be something that would pop off when I did it later. And then I can take my brush and go back and add a little depth up in here, up in here, and over on this side to get it so it connects to the flower. All righty. And the final thing I'm going to do and this you're gonna think is absolutely crazy. And now I'm gonna take, and yes, that's what I'm, my goal is, is to add texture to this. I'm gonna take this leaf. You see how it's really, really textured on the back. I'm going to try to press the middle of vein of the leaf down the middle of my flower. And I'm just gonna take my fingers. If you remember when we did the fall leaves, we pressed from the center out. That's what I'm doing, pressing from the center out. And I lift it up, and I don't know that you can really tell. There we go. Then I'm gonna take this leaf, same thing, I'm gonna put it down the center and just press. Oh, that one's a good one, there's a good one. Do you see this one here? You can see the stem down the middle and the, the leaves out the side, it just really, adds a lot. So this is the better leaf. This is the leaf I'm going to keep using. I'm going to go up here and do it. And I don't think I need to do that one. I'm going to go over this one one more time because I think this leaf really worked the best of the leaves. Yeah, it did. Okay, so I'm going to get another Q-tip. I'm going to clean this up. because I'm not gonna be putting a background on this. So I have to make sure that what I painted is good enough and doesn't have a lot of overage. Okay, oh. I don't know what that is there, but we'll get it off, okay. And there you are. I'm gonna get as close as I can. I think those leaves look really cool, I'm really, really pleased with them. Now, good morning, Mary. You don't need to do your leaves this way. This is just a suggestion. You can certainly paint them in the normal way. But I think these are usually fairly difficult leaves to do. And um, they're, they're really curly. And um, I think this is, this is just an alternative for you. That, and especially if you're a beginner and you did some acrylic painting at some time, this is a nice way of doing it. Okay, now I'm gonna take my filbert. This is, um, what does it say it is? It's a 12. Let me get these out of the way. And we're gonna start painting. 
The first thing I'm going to do is start in the center of these flowers. If you notice on the flower I showed you, let me get this one here. It's a really good one. This little guy here. Can you see how it's lighter around the center and then the center is dark? Okay, well, what I'm going to try to do to create that is just take my filbert. I have oil on it. I don't just have turpentine on it. And I'm going to start with the little guy so I can practice a little, get it right. And I'm just going to push with the filbert. Push. Kind of using the edge of the filbert, wiping it off as I go. And it's giving me a very nice highlight. Can you see that highlight there? I'm using egg. I know it won't fire out for me. And I'm going to put a little oil on here. Now, I'm going to start with, oh, hang on. Before I do that, I still have a couple places where we need green. What you have to remember with this is you're working from the underneath part to the top part. So if this leaf is under this flower, you're going to start with the leaf, then work to the flower. You can always wipe out the flower and see like the flower is here and the flower is here. Okay, so I'm going to start with this and I'm just going to I'm going around the center. Do you remember how we did the rose? I know this is a long time ago. I'm going to do this with a little darker color because with yellow, you really can't see. So let me get a pen here. Okay. So this is the center of your... Um, okay, that's the center of your... of your... Um, sunflower. And I'm doing this now with a brown so you can really see. So I come around and I come like this. And then I just sort of, then I'm going to do the same thing here. But this is with my yellow. You see what I'm doing? I'm doing one stroke, couple down here. Then I'm going to flip it around and do the other side. And I won't come out quite as far because that's a side that doesn't have the shadow. So the side that has the shadow, let me do it with an orange, it'll be just as easy to see. The side that has this, the shadow, but I would do this with yellow, with my yellow. I do it like this, do a couple down here right around the center, and then I flip it and I just do the outer. And that automatically gives me some highlight on these. Okay, so let's do that. Again, I'm using egg which is not easy to see, I know. Um, I probably can come up here now and do it up here for you. Okay, you have to load fairly frequently. If a little of the brown comes up, that's fine. Oh, am I high enough? There we go. Up. Oh, hang on. Not that much brown. And this one here. And I might put a little bit of orange in them. Just to give them a little color. Now I'm coming down this side. And I'm just going to give the edges a little bit of color by putting a tad of orange in there with my yellow. Just a tad of orange. Or you could use reflected light. Reflected light is very pretty. Now remember, this guy's kind of dying out, so it wouldn't hurt. And then on top, I'm going to take my, my egg again. And I'm going to do, oh, I have to come down. These are these guys up here. You want them to come over the top. So we're working from underneath to over the top. You see how I did that? Then I'm going to take 
my full moss with a side load of brown green and I'm just going to do these guys. Whee! 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 And fill them in. And if you want, you can get a little more dark green on there and go back and Hang on a minute here. I've got a little too much out of line there. I don't want that because I know what I want to do in my second coat and I need it to stay in line. Okay. And I missed these two down here. I need to pick them up. At the bottom here, I missed these guys. There we go. Okay, so that's my dead row, my dead one. <laughs> Okay, now let's do the big guy on top. He's a little easier to do. I'm going to have to turn this over. You know, when it gets like this, it's time to either turn it over or turn it inside out or something, but you want to get, uh, you want to get better color. You don't want to keep, especially if you're using light colors. You need to change it and get a little better, okay, uh, cleaner, cleaner color. That's the key. Okay, now I've got my orange on the side low now. The secret is not too many, not too many strokes, just, just what you need, not many more. Remember, this is a first coat. You're going to be able to wash these and do all kinds of things. These are going to be in the background. I'm using more reflected light because it's a darker color. I'm just teasing the color down the side of the of the flower. I'm not I'm not wiping it down. I'm teasing it. See here? I'm just teasing it out to the edge. Nice, light strokes. Lift as you go. I love this brush because it does that. If you have a filbert, I think you'll find that you'll love the brush because it, it does. Oh, I'm sorry. It was out of frame there. It, it, it'll do that for you. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay, I'll try to do it this way so you can see what I'm doing. Now on this side, the sun's coming this way. Your shadow is at the bottom here. Oops, let me get a little more orange on there. It's at the bottom here. There we go. Turn this. I'm going to put more yellow on there. Yeah, that's better. These need a little more yellow. And I think this one, and I think this one. Okay. Oh, hang on a minute. Let me just... There we go. You can put a light color on now. The darker color can always come later. You've got another fire for this. This takes two, sometimes three fires. We're going to actually put washes over some of these leaves and things with some really unusual colors, but I think you're going to like it. I know I'm out of frame now. Here we go. I'm going to take this guy and go... Uh, come here, you. I'm on the side of my brush. That's what gives me that point when I go over that. Then I have to clean it because I was in the brown and I don't want that brown to carry over onto my other leaves. Then I'm going to take egg 
These, because they're almost dead, are very simple to do. You just, with this brush especially. If you don't have a filbert, you should find one. A filbert is a rounded edge brush. This one is very, very thin. See how thin that is? And it just works fabulous. Now, I didn't even know this was a filbert until I took my acrylics class from Kelly, and she was telling us the names of all the brushes, and I went, oh, that's what that is. Now I'm going into a little bit of the auburn. You don't need to do dark colors on this version because this version is the first version and you want it to be lighter colors and you're just gonna, oh, well, not that light. <laughs> okay, I'll put a little orange with it so you can at least see what I'm doing here. Okay. So this is what I have. That's basically all we do on the first coat. Anybody, I think pretty much at this point, um, that's all we do. We put this in the kiln and fire it. You might want to sign it now. You don't have to. You have at least one more fire on it. And it should come out looking about like this when we're done. And then we'll work on the next fire. Okay. Um, that's it for today. Pick up your brushes, keep painting. I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed the program and I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.